Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, joined here by attorney Terry Austin. We're going to break down the biggest live trials and legal stories in the news today. And you know what I'm going to say? We got a lot to cover, so let's get started. That's powerful. Look, Terry, you tell me, if you have a death penalty case, it seems like this one is more eligible than any other kind of one. You have a father who's acute, well, let me phrase, who was convicted of killing his children in brutal fashion. What is more for the jury to think about? I couldn't agree more. If these aren't aggravating circumstances, I don't know what is. He absolutely killed all of them. There's no question about that. I guess the only question is whether or not there were any mitigating circumstances. He killed one and then thoughtfully killed the rest. So I think he stands a good chance of getting death. Well, well to play devil's advocate, let me ask you this. It's hard for any group of people jurors who are really normal human beings who were taken out of their lives and to put into this court system, isn't it hard for them to say, hey, we think we can tell, we can determine what would happen to this man, we can decide whether or not his life should be ended? I mean, you know what I'm saying? It, it's got to be a tough decision no matter what kind of case it is. Absolutely. No one wants to put anyone to death. I think some of the testimony in the trial, though, shows that the children suffered. One of the teachers said that the child, Nathan, I think it was, right. had you know, time, marks yeah. around his neck. And so the children suffered, not even you know, just the death and the murder, but before that. And look, they, you know, one to eight, it's just so young, so sad. It's a really, really hard case to hear from a lot of different levels. And as we talked about, today is going to be an emotional day, as you can imagine, when members of Jones's family will most likely testify on his behalf. Now, going back to what the defense plans to do, let's Let's go back to the defense's opening statement from the penalty phase. Terry, I guess I'm a bit confused, and maybe you could help explain this to me. If the jury came back and found him guilty, not guilty but mentally ill, which was one of their options, doesn't that signify that they don't really believe that he had a mental illness or significant mental illness to go towards the insanity defense? The reason I'm asking you this is because what can the defense really present during the penalty phase in terms of a mental illness? If this jury says we're not buying it, the reason I ask is because we believe a new witness just got on the stand. We're going to go live after our next break. Dr. Donna Maddox, a forensic psychiatrist. So how much can the defense really go with mental illness here? I don't think the defense can go with mental illness. I think what they can do, however, is get the jury to feel bad for him, to feel sorry, to think that punishment in life already in prison is enough and that death is not necessary. But they legally can do that even though the jury said, hey... We don't think he's guilty but mentally ill. Well, they can, you know, look at the witness that's coming up. They can feel sorry for him. They can say life in prison is enough. Frankly, I think that it's going to be difficult, and I think death is, is definitely on the table. Does it ever work to say, hey, you should be sympathetic for a man who killed his kids? I mean, yeah, let's look at his tough upbringing. His mother was institutionalized. You know, he very religious at points. I mean, two of the, one of the witnesses that the defense called uh, last week was, was, I believe, a minister to talk more about Jones. What do you think? Is it possible that the jury would say, hey, you know, maybe we do have some sympathy for this guy? It's possible, but I think they're going to go ahead and convict on death as opposed to letting him live his life in prison. Remember, when you're in prison, some of these folks, you know, they get three square meals a day. I'm not saying it's not punishment, right. but I think here when you're killing five of your own children and they're innocent, I think the jury's going to not feel sorry for him. What about the fact that they've seen him every day? They've observed a man, a human being, every day in that courtroom. They've looked at him, they've studied him, and yet they, can, they are looking at him and saying, we're going to end your life. Does that have an effect on uh, you know, a, a decision in this case? That's a good point. I think it depends on the demeanor of the defendant. I think sure. here, when you look at him, he doesn't even look as though he has remorse. Yeah, look at him. I mean, that was his face for the entire majority of trial. Had a couple of emotional outbursts here and there. But that face was the face that was looking at every witness throughout this case. And you talk about demeanor, that's something to look at. As we listen to this defense witness, and a pretty good defense witness, here's the thing, Terry. In society, and you correct me if I'm wrong, we choose not to execute, or we don't, we, we say we shouldn't execute those who are mentally ill because it's not their fault. They didn't have a choice in what they did. The jury made a decision here and said, this man did choose what he did. He may be schizophrenic, he may have mental illness, but at the end of the day, that didn't affect his ability to make that decision. He chose to kill his kids. 
So why does this witness, why does this testimony even matter here? I think it does matter, and Dr. Maddox is doing a great job on the stand. And what the defense is trying to show is there were mitigating circumstances here. You're absolutely right, Jesse. It could very well be that they've already made up their mind that he is guilty and he's not insane and he should be put to death. On the other hand, some of the jurors may think, you know what, he had all these issues, his mother was diagnosed, right. so maybe let's not put him to death. But how often do you see jurors who are swayed by this penalty phase? Because I would imagine a lot of them came in here and made a decision about what the punishment should be for him the minute they convicted him. You know what I'm saying? In other words, how much does a penalty phase matter? I agree with you, except the defense has to do something. Sure. And he's doing all that he can to save this guy's life, so this is the best they can do. Any benefit, or have you ever seen it work where a defendant during the penalty phase makes a statement, maybe says something uh, in order to get some sympathy on the part of the jury? Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen it work? Yeah, it has happened in the past. I don't know whether or not it always works, but I think the defense attorney would rather put the defendant on the stand during this phase versus during the original phase of the trial. Right. So that the jurors can see a little sympathy there. I, the, you talk about the, the, the rules are different during a penalty phase than they are in a trial, right? The, the, the rules of evidence are a little more lax? Yes, that's right. They can put on witnesses to show that he is a good person, that he hasn't done this before, to try to mitigate, you know, what the sentence is going to be. Right, and at the end of the day, the state wants those aggravating circumstances to outweigh the mitigating circumstances. The defense wants the other thing. See what I'm doing right here? See this little pendulum motion? Okay, a strong witness talked about him being psychotic, schizophrenia, schizophrenic. Strong witness, what's the defense, what's the prosecution trying to do right now? I think the prosecution is trying to show that she testifies often and that, you know, this case is similar to other cases and she's just saying what needs to be said for the defense. But I think she's holding up extremely well and she's got a great affect. She's working with the cross-examinator. Is that a fair critique? Because I've seen it happen in other cases before, particularly when we've had uh, defendants who are convicted of murder and there's a death penalty on the table. And then I remember, I recall one witness, uh, this expert who said, you know, he thought the guy had a mental brain disorder, a, a you know, brain defect, and they looked at his past and they said, you found one in every case that you ever testified to. You always found a brain defect, and there was kind of a bias there. And is there any, there's a jury buy-in that said, well, she's getting paid, maybe she has to say a thing a certain way. What do you think about that? I think that the prosecution has to at least try to make that case. But I think here, she's only done it one other time, and there was a slight difference between that case and this case. Right. She's very honest about the whole thing, and she's very knowledgeable. I think she's going to do well. Absolutely. All right, continuing to question her opinions here, uh, what do you think of what the state's doing? Because I, I think they're doing a pretty good job. They're doing a great job, and as a matter of fact, I was thinking, stop right there, because he's often giving her an opportunity to come back. So for instance, he was saying that, there was no sign of schizophrenia before the incident. Right. There was no decline. And she was saying, yes, yes, yes. And then she came back and said, but there was some decline. So it's going back and forth. And that he was a high-functioning individual Correct. who ultimately did this. At the end of the day, I, I, I keep, can't help but keep thinking what you said. It's not so much about determining if he had a mental illness, but it's more about sympathy here. Absolutely. It's, it's more about will the jury find, well, you know, he had a lot of things going on in his life. Uh, he does suffer from mental illness. He chose to kill his kids. Yes, he should spend the rest of his life in prison and not be executed. I, I mean, it's about sympathy, isn't it? it? It is. And if she is able to show that all of these things were going on before he killed the children, I think they might just be sympathetic. It's a tough decision on their hands. And this jury has, you know, been seated here. They had to determine the uh, guilt phase. They found him guilty of murdering his children. Tough case for them to sit through. Not easy any which way you slice it. And now we are going to see what their decision will ultimately be in the penalty phase. A lot at stake here. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about this case and we'll be live. Stay tuned.